Hey guys, Chad here with Excess Trail Cameras, and today we are going to tackle the topic of batteries and break down the differences between a few different types and what that actually could mean for potential trail camera users. Before we dive into that, if you guys find value or like what we're doing with these videos, podcasts, interviews, be sure you guys are leaving, uh, dropping comments below, liking the videos, and hitting that subscribe button for us. That means the world, and we're humbled uh, when we see that support roll in. So. Batteries are such a big deal when it comes to trail camera performance and how they're operating or not operating. And it's one of the things that are most commonly overlooked um, by trail camera users. They think simply going to the dollar store and grabbing batteries for, you know, 20 cents a piece, throwing them in your camera and that camera is going, going to operate as, as designed. And that's just simply, simply not the case. So we're, when we're looking at trail camera battery options for internal power, we're basically going to look at kind of three different types of batteries. Um, the first being your standard alkaline battery, um, lithium batteries, and then rechargeable or nickel metal hydride batteries. And as we break these down, we'll go into the pros of con of each and what that can mean to you as a trail camera user and consumer. So looking at your standard alkaline batteries, um, Duracell's, uh, cheap AC Delco's, Amazon Basics. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's countless brands that you can find and you can find them at any dollar store, gas station, Walmart, Amazon, across, pretty much across America. But just because they're the most common and readily available and the cheapest doesn't necessarily mean that they are the best power solution for your trail camera. So looking at, um, you know, some of the advantages of alkaline batteries, availability, as I mentioned, these things can be bought pretty much anywhere, any store across America, gas stations, Walmarts, um, you know, whatever grocery store. If you're in a pinch, you can certainly um, buy these for eight bucks or, you know, whatever, and uh, throw them in your camera to get you by. But again, it's not the, um, not your best option. Uh, another advantage to alkaline batteries is the upfront cost. These things are very, um, very cheap to buy. If you shop around or, or if you're familiar and shop on Amazon, as most people do, um, you can find these things for about 10 cents a piece. Um, so there, there are some times where these batteries can be used in warm weather, uh, where data is a little less critical. You can absolutely throw these things uh, in your cameras um, and use them in a pinch. And oftentimes our specific strategy with alkaline batteries, because they're so cheap, we will run them um, in some of these summer months from, from May to July or May to August where um, the extreme temperatures may not come into effect and the data is a little less critical. Um, so we will throw these in and, and use these in those types of scenarios. Some of the disadvantages of alkaline batteries is cold weather performance. Um, alkaline batteries use a water-based electrode. So what that means to you is as these temperatures uh, start to drop and not maybe not necessarily at 32 degrees, but as you get um, maybe into the teens, you're going to start to see performance issues with these with these batteries because they use a water based electrode. There's potential there for them to freeze and then causing leakage or an, uh, an actual battery to explode and then actually cause damage to your um, actual camera, which is not a good thing. So one of the reasons we really want to talk about alkaline batteries and the biggest disadvantage is voltage loss. Alkaline batteries start at 1.5 volts. So with eight batteries into a 12 volt camera at full capacity, full, full charge, these batteries are equaling 12 volts. As that camera is drawing power from these batteries, so as that camera is taking pictures or videos, you're going to start to see voltage drop. So if you were to look at the voltage discharge rate on uh, on these alkaline batteries, which you could just simply Google that, you're going to see almost a um, straight drop in, in voltage. So as that camera is drawing power, taking photos, that voltage is going to start creeping down to 11.8 volts, 11.7 volts, 11.5 volts, 11.2 volts. So as that starts to happen, you're going to start to see performance issues inside your camera. You're going to start seeing the flash range shrink, so your nighttime pictures are going to be a little bit darker. You're gonna see your PIR sensor and detection circuit shrink up, so there's potential there to actually miss photos. And then ultimately, as that voltage gets low enough, that camera's simply going to stop taking nighttime photos and only take daytime photos, and then ultimately, 
um, not take daytime photos. So while there are some advantages, advantages to alkaline batteries, for us, the disadvantages just simply outweigh um, outweigh the advantages. Data is too important for us to um, rely on these power sources when time is critical. If you want to use them, use them during the summer months when maybe that data is not necessarily um, ulti ultimately as important as the in-season data stuff. So the next battery type we want to look at are rechargeables. Nickel metal hydrides. If you're a serious penny saver, it's hard to overlook these because you can buy a couple packs, expect to recharge them and simply swap them out and only have that one-time purchase cost. Um, but there are some big downsides to using rechargeable batteries. And one of those um, is simply just the memory effect from charging um, or recharging these batteries. And, you know, as we talked about alkaline batteries starting at 1.5 volts while they're fully charged, a lot of times these rechargeable batteries are going to have a lower voltage output when even fully charged. So that's something to pay attention to when you're when you're looking at what type of rechargeable battery. And just for reference or note, we don't recommend using rechargeable batteries inside of any, any camera. So we try to stay away from these. But some of the advantages to nickel metal hydrides or rechargeable batteries is the ener energy density. Um, although they have a higher discharge rate, um, you can typically expect to get um, a longer life expectancy because they operate about 2,000 milliamp hours, which is about 500 more milliamp hours um, than you know your standard alkaline battery. Obviously, the other advantage is the cost savings. One-time purchase, you're able to recharge them and use them, you know, up to a thousand times, uh, depending on what type of uh, battery you're getting or what type of manufacturer, um, what manufacturer you're buying that battery from. Um, <clears throat> the other advantage is cold weather performance. So because these are using a nickel metal hydride, metal-based electrode, uh, you're gonna get a lot better performance in cold weather. So those sub 32 degrees, uh, sub 32 degree days aren't gonna have an effect on these batteries. But the disadvantages of these rechargeable batteries are, this could be subjective, but just the added responsibility of having 20, 20 sets of rechargeable batteries, knowing which ones are charged, which ones aren't charged, when to switch them out of your camera, um, you know, for guys who are running a lot of cameras, it's just an added headache and something that I personally do not want to deal with. Um, for the hobbyist, maybe that's only has one or two cameras that are just in the cameras are just in their backyard, maybe monitoring your chickens or their garden or whatever, and it's not that big of a deal. This could be a good option, but uh, for serious truck camera users, um, that added responsibility of managing batteries uh, just isn't worth it in, in, our, in our opinion. Um, another disadvantage is compatibility with cameras. Not all cameras or devices are compatible with um, rechargeable batteries just because they are they operate at a lower voltage. So as I mentioned, fully charged 1.2 volts uh, with a 12 volt camera, you put eight batteries in that uh, in that camera, you're already at a, you're already behind the eight ball. You're already at a lower voltage um, than what that camera, requ camera requires to work, um, you know, in a perfect world. So and then the last disadvantage with these nickel metal hydrides or rechargeables is simply the higher discharge rate. So as you look at that discharge rate on a graph, which you could simply Google, um, you're gonna see a lot faster discharge rate versus an alkaline battery. So the third battery we wanna talk about and probably in our opinion, the best option, this is something that we talk about and it feels like we pound home more than anything, is using lithium batteries inside your trail camera. And there's a lot of good reasons for that. So when you're looking at the overall capacity of your internal batteries, just to rephrase this, you're looking at 1500 milliamp hours from an alkaline, 2000 milliamp hours from rechargeable, and then the lithium batteries are gonna carry about 3000 milliamp hours of capacity. So that's three times um, or two times what you're getting out of an alkaline battery. So that's, that is a big deal. Um, now the advantages to, other advantages to lithium batteries is obviously the lifespan, as I mentioned, and the biggest thing is the consistent voltage output. So uh, a lithium battery is gonna start at 1.7 volts when it's at full capacity. So you're at 0.2 volts higher than an alkaline and almost uh, half a volt more than uh, a nickel metal hydride rechargeable. And with lithium batteries, you see a constant voltage output out to 3,000, 3,200 milliamp hours before it starts to decrease. So the reference that we like to use is, a lot of people are familiar with um, battery operated power tools. So 
you know, for guys, carpenters or woodworkers or, you know, people who are familiar with those types of tools, you can use a lithium power drill. You stick a new battery in it and you run a thousand screws into a board. You know, you're building a deck, you run a thousand screws into your board, in, into that deck. And then all of a sudden in two screws, that battery is completely dead. And that's exactly the way that the voltage out output works in these. So you're getting a consistent 1.7 volts all the way out to 3000 milliamp hours. And then you're basically going to have a straight drop off where that battery is going to go from hundred percent down to zero. So for people who are familiar with the Exodus brand, you know that we have um, battery, a battery life monitor and reading inside of our cameras. So the camera will actually tell you how much battery life you have left, whether that's read in percentage of the actual battery capacity or in days. The challenge with lithium batteries is they always read 100%. They will always read 100% until the moment that they die. So if you're using lithium batteries in a camera and you see that voltage reading or capacity reading, life expectancy reading to be less than 100%, go ahead and change those out because it's not gonna be long before they're 100% 100 uh, discharged and consumed. Um, as we talked about extreme heat and weather, cold temps, lithium batteries are an absolute workhorse in cold weather in fact the battery we rec recommend the energizer lithium batteries are rated down to minus 40 degrees um, and all the way up to 140 so they're not at all affected by ex extreme temperatures and that is an extremely big deal for us as hunters um, or outdoorsmen you know using these things through those cold months december january february where that data is really starting to get critical uh, both in season and post season, um, that's the stuff that you don't want to miss. And that is the exact time that you're going to want to be using these uh, in your trail cameras. But, you know, the disadvantage is something that's hard to overcome for a lot of people. The upfront cost of these things can be quite expensive. Um, we don't recommend going to a grocery store, or buying them at Walmart. That's not the best option. If you're buying lithium batteries in places like that, you're probably going to spend up to $2 a battery. Um, so that's not your best option. Um, you can buy them on Amazon for, you know, you can find them on sale for about a dollar a piece. So for eight bucks, um, you're able to put those in your camera and, and get a lot of, a lot of videos and a lot of pictures. Um, with a lift two camera, you can expect anywhere from 20 to 25,000 photos off of uh, a set of, a set of lithium. So for a lot of people that, um, that eight or $10, whatever you're, you're buying those for a lot of times will last you an entire season or even potentially, even potentially more. Um, and then you don't have to worry again. You don't have to worry about the performance of your camera because you know, it's going to work. You know, it's going to be taking pictures and you're not missing data and, uh, you can rest easy at night. So again, um, a lot of information there. A lot of it may seem a little bit mundane, but batteries and power sources are one of the most overlooked and most common mistakes people make when they're, when they're running trail cameras. A lot of times when they experience trail cam failure, or they think that the product is not working, maybe missing pictures, um, not getting nighttime photos, whatever it may be. A lot of times that those problems are related to the power source. Um, and one other note, while we're on the topic of batteries is best practice. You should never mix brands or types of batteries inside any electronic device. Um, what happens is from brand to brand, your voltage is going to vary a little bit and even the resistance, um, and maybe chemical makeup inside those batteries are going to differ just a little bit. And when you mix battery brands with the resistance being different, there's potential there for them to leak or self-discharge where those maybe seven or, or six uh, uh, unified brand batteries are discharging into a, a bad battery. So just a quick tip on that. So that's pretty much it for batteries. We're gonna do another video about uh, external power sources. So if you have interest there, make sure you uh, look that video up. And as always, uh, like, Leave a comment and smash that subscribe button.